Hi everyone, I'm back with another Diablo 4 video and today I want to talk about the Melted Heart of Selic. I keep getting a lot of questions about this item. People ask me, hey, I found this uber unique. What can I do with this? What build does it fit? And typically my answer was, yeah, not really anything. So looking at these stats, they are pretty horrible outside of the resource generation. And you give up your amulet slot, which is usually like a very important aspect to put. For example, for the high-end builds, usually something like a disobedience or in some cases, something like even like a buffed offensive aspect or something like that. And then you get this kind of like resource barrier effect here or resource shield rather where you spend your resources instead of life. But after trying it out, it actually turns out to be something pretty interesting. So I tried this out on a barb and on a rogue because that's what I had at that time. And, uh, well, first of all, my thought was, well, if you're playing a rogue, you can play Inner Sight. And if you know Inner Sight, it kind of puts your resource bar to maximum. So if you look at this here, when it procs, you see this little, like, a gorge here in the bottom right. And then you have full resources. And I figured you would just be invincible when that happens. However, it turns out that is not actually the case. Actually, what does happen for rogues, it's kind of interesting. It fills up your entire bar once and then it sets all of your resource costs to zero so you don't spend any resources no matter what you do however with melted half Selic, your resources can still go down but you don't actually see it so in this effect it just plays like it's like an overlay on your uh, energy bar basically it just plays the animation while your resources go down when you take damage with melted half Selic. so when you mouse over it you can actually see that so that's what i did here and well, it turns out that for rogues, there's no like invincibility that you can do or something like that. Um, so it's kind of like worthless here. Uh, yeah, this is like one of those screenshots. You see the bar looks full, but my energy is actually only 83. And then when the effect ends, you'll see I will be like half resources or something like that. Here you can see that. So that's exactly what I just described. It's actually just fake, this whole inner side stuff. That's a bit unfortunate. However, though, there is another class that can use this to a pretty big advantage and that's the barb now the interesting thing about barbs is that you don't actually have to do anything to generate resources as long as you take damage and it seems like that depending on how much damage you take you gain more resources when you take a hit and this means that it can kind of create like an infinite uh, feedback loop with this item and as you can see here i'm standing in a t100 basically afk and my resources they sometimes go down but they also kind of go up again depending on what hits me exactly i don't know exactly the formula or like the mechanics behind like how much fury exactly you're getting depending on what hits you but as you can see here i'm literally just standing there afk basically and not pressing any shouts i don't even have any shouts i don't have any berserking up i i don't really have anything this was not really optimized all i did is i equipped like um a pair of boots that has uh, damage reduction while injured so it looks like that and uh, also similar with the pants and this is kind of the gear here there's even like a lot of res there that could be more damage reduction you know this could be way more optimized and that was basically the setup that i used to go in there and try it out and even in like much larger poles with elites and stuff you can actually just like kind of sit there as a barb and just become invincible so i was not really expecting this kind of power in that item to be honest I knew about this mechanic that he gained Fury and I figured this could be something useful but it turns out it's actually way crazier than I anticipated because it seems like there is kind of like a certain breakpoint, like a certain like critical mass of resource generation that you have to reach and at that point you can kind of just like create an infinite loop of invincibility basically without really doing anything. So with this extra damage reduction while injured, you can get a lot of damage reduction. You can have two items of that with like up to 43% damage reduction. So that makes you very tanky when you're low life. But on the other hand, if you ever like heal up accidentally, for example, so here you see here, I press the potion and you'll see me actually taking a lot of damage immediately because my resources go down and this is absolutely blast me. So these low life builds are definitely enabled by this item and you can literally just like sit there in like basically everything. And it's going to be <laughs> pretty wild to see this in action in even Ambatvar of Zia, I think later on. 
Right now, a lot of builds on Barb in particular run Vanished Wars Talisman, but I could definitely see some builds dropping that in favor of Melted Heart of Salic. So in my opinion, the main ingredients here are a lot of damage reduction and then a lot of resource generation. You get resource generation on your rings, so they can look like this here. Resource generation, they multiply with each other as well. So with three perfect rolls, you can have like upwards of like 60, 70% extra resource generation. It's even more if you have a Shaco, but I mean, not many people have that. However, if you're already at the point where you have a Metal Tower of Salic, you might be going for a Shaco or you might have one already. And in that case, there is more resource generation and that tremendously helps with this entire like invincibility setup. But on the other hand, you don't really have to stand AFK and not do anything. You can actually play the game as well, still use your attacks, still generate Fury actively. For example, you know, there can be uh, you know, the unrelenting fury aspect that gives you resources back when you attack. There can be something like berserk fury aspect. There can be the shout aspects. There's many ways to generate a lot of fury while actively playing the game. So even if your setup is not like fully min max of a shako and like perfect resource generation rolls and all that, you can still gain a lot of extra fury to fuel the shield. And it turns out it's pretty busted. So it's kind of an interesting item and turns out that after <laughs> testing it out, it definitely deserves like its uber status. However, it seems to be extremely niche. I think this is mostly a barb item, but technically it enables this kind of a like low life damage reduction while injured playstyle for any class now. Previously, this was something that was only really viable on druids. So that was like the old bulwark druid build. And we saw people like just face tanking uh, the waves on Lilith, for example. But just being like low life and having like three or four of these damage reduction while injured rolls and then just spamming bulwark all the time and this kind of has the same purpose here it gives you essentially a barrier that's not a barrier so it's not like the blue barrier that you see on your health bar but instead it's your resources and you can spend that instead and stay at low life at all times so this is how that works and in that case you know any class you know rogue sorg whatever you, you can do this low life kind of play style so you just try to like slowly approach like some monsters, let them hit you until they have low HP, and then you you stay in low HP, never press your potion, never have any life on kill or any kind of effects like that proc. So that kind of kills like Doomringer for these kind of builds as well. I didn't actually unequip this here for this test, but it has a life proc, for example, and you kind of don't want to use that. But yeah, you want to get rid of all of these healing effects, stay at low life permanently, and make sure you don't run out of resources. It will be quite interesting to see how other classes will try to solve this. There's obviously also some, some other synergies like just basic attack builds, for example, like Arclash, Stormclaw, um, Frenzy, uh, these kind of things. You can definitely play that with this amulet because there's like this natural synergy that you actually generate resources all the time. You never spend any. So this can also make you extremely tanky just using that amulet by default. But in general, on barbs, it seems to be pretty crazy. I'm definitely going to theory craft around this amulet a little bit more in the next days in preparation for Abattoir of Zero. Let's see if we can actually like really put this into a lot of builds that were otherwise not really expected to use something like that. I can definitely see some potential there on many different classes. So stay tuned for that. I'm actually like preparing a lot of builds right now for Abattoir of Zero, so I might have something to share there soon again. And that's already it for this video here. Just want to get this out. Uh, let me know your experiences with the amulet. I would be quite excited to hear about it and we'll see what comes out of it. That's it. Hope you like it, and see you guys next time.